In this video we're going to look at the geodesic on a cylinder. So the geodesic means the shortest distance between two points on a cylindrical surface. So I've drawn out the cylinder here and you can see it's got a, a Z axis, an X and a Y axis. Now we need three coordinates in order to give a point on the surface of this cylinder. So we can start off by working out how to get to the surface. We can get to the surface going a distance R. So that's this little distance here shown this yellow line. So that's a distance R. Now we can also work out where we are on the cylinder by how far round we've gone. So we can work out how far round we've gone by this angle theta. Now we can also work out how far up we are on the surface by the Z component. So those are the three components that we need in order to work out where we are on the surface of this cylinder. So we can say then that the X component here, well if that's theta there, then the X component is going to be R cos theta and the Y components are going to be the R sin theta and the Z component is just going to be the Z value. So we can therefore write out that our position is going to be uh, ds squared is going to equal ds squared plus dy squared plus dz squared so it's just an extension of the Pythagoras. Now you can get an intuition as to the small triangle here. So if this little triangle is actually drawn on the surface then we could say that the height there is just going to be a height of dz and the distance round there, well the distance round in this point direction here is similar to the, the distance you would get around here. Okay, It's just going to be a value of our r theta but in this case here it's an infinitesimal distance so it's going to be r d theta. So we could say at the very end that our our ds squared is going to be equal to our dz squared plus r squared d theta squared. But we're going to go and we'll actually work that out. Okay, So we'll start off by looking at the value of x. So we can look at uh, the rate of change of x with respect to the value theta. So dx by d theta is going to be equal, when we differentiate that you get minus r sine theta. So you can therefore say that dx is equal to minus r sine theta d theta. You can do the same with dy, and the dy is going to give us r cos theta d theta, and the dz is just going to be dz. So now we can put these back in for our values of our, uh, our, our dx, dy, and dz. So our ds squared is going to be minus r sine theta d theta squared plus r cos theta d theta squared plus dz squared. So whenever we square this up we get our r squared sine squared theta d theta squared and that's going to give us r squared cos squared theta d theta squared that's going to give us our dz squared. We can take out the common factor of r squared d theta squared gives us sine squared plus cos squared which is just a value of 1. So that's going to give us r squared d theta squared plus dz squared and that's exactly what we had seen and that was the same little triangle uh, that we, we had seen. So uh, the intuition that we had in the previous page is correct and that's how we derive it. So we're now in the position to choose which value to divide by here. So we're going to divide throughout by d theta squared. So we'll get ds squared by d theta squared equals r squared plus dz squared by d theta squared. We can then take the value of our d theta squared up. And then we can take the square root. We we'll take the square root of f for r squared plus z derivative squared to the power of a half times d theta. And we can see here that we've got a functional here, and it's got a, an independent variable that's going to be theta. And you can see that the only term here that is going to be a factor or a function of theta is this value of z derivative. So we're going to have a function of z derivative here. So it means that we can simplify the Euler Lagrange by simply writing it partial f by partial z derivative equals a constant. So then for we just have to go and differentiate our function up here with respect to z derivative. So we're going to differentiate our r squared plus z derivative squared to the power of a half. So that's going to give us a half r squared plus z derivative squared to the minus a half times 2 z derivative equals a constant. So let's continue with this on the next page.
So continuing from the last page, we have z derived of upon r squared plus z derived of squared to the power of a half equals c. We can therefore take this up over here. So that's going to give us a z derived equal c, r squared plus z derived of squared to the power of a half. We can get rid of the power of a half by squaring both sides, which is going to give us this here. We can then multiply out by the value of c, and then we can take the value of c squared z derived of squared over to the other side. And that's what I've done here. We can take out the common factor this side of our z derived of squared. That gives us 1 minus c squared equals c squared r squared. We then for say z derived squared equals c squared r squared divided by 1 minus c squared. So we can say therefore that these terms here, every single one of them is a constant. The radius is a fixed constant and the value c is a constant and 1 is a constant. So we can write the whole thing out here simply as a constant. So we can be left there with, with dz by d theta is just a constant. We'll give that constant a value of m. Okay, so we've got our dz equals m d theta, a little differential equation. So we can say the integral of dz is an integral of m d theta. So we can say that z is equal to m theta from this, and then we're, we're going to have to add our constant of integration, and that's going to give us a value of b. So we can say that z equals m theta plus b, and this here is the equation of a helix, and that's the equation that we've been looking to get to. So it's the shortest distance between two points on the surface of a cylinder. So that's all there is for this video. I'll get you on the next one. Goodbye.